let us begin our time of worship with a moment of thanksgiving. We thank God, brave men and women that have given their lives so that we live here without fear. Let us begin our time of worship with a minute of silence for those who have died in service to our country and to us. Dear God, I thank you for for this weekend and what it represents and the people who have sacrificed themselves for for this country and for us. I thank you for your almighty love and power that we can come to a, a place like this and just be in your presence and learn to live the life and teachings of Jesus and that we can live here more, leave here more equipped with your with your word, your knowledge. I thank you for everything you've given to us. And I thank you for the things we don't know you've given to us. In your name, I pray. Amen. So our scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year the king Uzziah died... I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. How awesome is our God. Please join me in silent prayer. Amen. There's a beauty in Isaiah's call, isn't there? He was destined for great things. <laughs> he was privileged to have this incredible vision of just one part of the Lord's robe filling the whole temple where he was. And here he had a hot coal put on his lips without his lips burning, and he was cleansed of all his sins. And these words after seeing the Lord, and of course he answered, Here I am, Lord. Send me. Everything was beautiful. Well, we understand that. I know my call into ministry, I think, was beautiful. I finished college with a degree in religion and Jewish studies and realized with that as a bachelor's, wow, I could teach Christianity at a Jewish school or Judaism at a Christian school. So what am I going to do? And I took a semester off and I, and I um, substitute taught and I loved it. But I realized I need to do something else, and I, I wanted to go into Jewish-Christian relations to encourage dialogue between faiths. And there really is a Jewish-Christian relations field. 
And so I decided to go to seminary because I didn't really know all that much about my own faith, about Christianity. And so I thought I'd go to seminary and get a master's degree and I would do that in Texas, and then I'd go up to Boston where Elie Wiesel was, and, and I could get a doctorate in Jewish-Christian relations. I had it all planned out. Well, then I went to seminary, and this, after two years of academic work, there's a third year that's an internship, followed usually by a fourth year of academic work again. It's a four-year program. And so I did the two years of the academic work and everything was fine. And I went on internship from Dallas to Southern Illinois because I'm not a Southerner and I just, that's as far north as they would allow anyone to go. <laughs> so I went to Southern Illinois and I was the first associate pastor that this larger church had. And it was incredible. Oh, I loved every minute of it. I felt like I was finally home in the church. And so I realized that I was loving ministry and I wanted to continue. I thought I was having a call from God, but I wanted to test that call. I wasn't ready to commit and go back to seminary. So I went to England for two years to say, okay, I'll serve a church for two more years and test this. And, oh, it went so well. I, I thought I was going for one year, but it went so well with the first year that they asked for me to stay a second year. And so I stayed there for two years serving a church. And that's when I truly felt, this is the path for me. This is where God wants me to serve. And so I went back for my last year of seminary and came out west. And I am so thankful for answering the call. So how do we know? How do we know that we have truly discerned God's call for our lives? Let's hear from you. How do you know when you have discerned correctly a call for your life? Your wife tells you. Uh, I hope that continues and that you add your minister tells you too to serve on anything. <laughs> How do you know when you have answered a call and it's the right call for you? Katie? You get a happy feeling. You feel peaceful. What about the rest of you? scripture, prayer, or other people saying something to you? Yeah, where they, they start talking to you and, and they'll say something about, but then that's what I experienced too. What do you mean you're not thinking about going into ministry? Of course you should go into ministry. This is where your gifts are. And so, yeah, very much. Any other ideas of how you can discern? Judy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so going back to the Bible, and you'll be guided. So we hear the call, and we say, here I am, Lord. Or I have a hard time with the order that's in that reading. Here am I, Lord. I, it just feels more natural to say, here I am, Lord. Send me. But now for the rest of the story of Isaiah. So Isaiah had this beautiful call, and he answered the call. And do you think things went well? The rest of the call. Well, for one thing, when the angels, the seraph said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Do you know that today is actually Trinity Sunday in the church year? And so this was chosen, this reading today, by a long time ago, by higher ups in the church, and they chose it because it's holy three times. And so they, they say, oh, well, this must be God 
Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. And so, Trinity Sunday. But that's not what this was for. In Hebrew, there's no exclamation point. Nowhere. And so instead in ancient Hebrew, what they do is they repeat something. And so this wouldn't have been like I read it. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, like we do when we say it. It would have been holy, holy. It would have been shouting, holy is the Lord God of hosts. It would have been awe. Yeah, I got his attention. It would have been awe-inspiring. And so Isaiah would have felt the fear. It would have been that awe-inspiring that he fell down and, and recognized his own guilt, his own sin. And so, of course, his response to that was, here I am, send me. He probably also would have been saying, oh, what happens if I don't say that? But then Isaiah heard the rest of his call, where the Lord actually said to him, Speak so that no one understands. Those Israelites make their minds dull. They will close their ears and their eyes to you. Healing will be delayed. And cities will be destroyed. Do you think he was still saying, Here I am, Lord, send me? His response was, How long, O Lord? Isaiah was not called to make life easy for anyone. So, how do we know? Our call is true. I have very often said to people the same things that you have said, especially the same thing that Rhonda and Katie said, that you'll have a peace about you, a peace in your heart. You will know it's your call to it when it doesn't feel like a chore. It feels like a privilege. Really? Who has served on church committees? Who has answered the call? Has it always felt like it's been a joy? No. I saw Clara put her hand down quickly with that one. But think of Moses. When Moses was called by God, do you remember what he said? Oh, God, please send someone else. And he went off and, and he went and, and he ended up leading the Israelites out of out of slavery after the plagues and and he led them into a new area where it should have been a, like a week's walk and instead they wandered for 40 years it was not a call for Moses to be comfortable and to feel at peace Elijah do you remember when Elijah was called and one of the things he had to do was that there were false prophets and other real prophets of God and and Jezebel loved the false prophets and and so they had a, a contest and whichever whichever sacrifice the bad one or the good one whichever sacrifice would catch on fire and burn then that would be the true and so it was it was Elijah's that caught on fire and Jezebel was so mad because all of her prophets died. And so Elijah was called but he ended up fleeing for his life as Jezebel sent people to kill him. Mother Teresa felt this strong call from God. Do you think her life was easy? And that she always felt good about it? No. No. John Wesley, on Thursday, it was Aldersgate Day. Aldersgate Day was the day that John Wesley went to a building on Aldersgate Street, and he heard Martin Luther's preface to the Book of Romans being read which is the most boring thing you could imagine. So it had to be the Holy Spirit working. Because he was listening to it and he felt his heart strangely warmed. 
And he wrote in his diary, I now know that I'm a Christian. I wasn't before, but now I am. And yet, we, we talk about John Wesley all the time, the founder of Methodism. Do you think his life was easy? No. And even in his old age, as he was in his 80s, he was still riding horseback so many miles to preach everywhere. And wherever he went, people were angry because he was doing something new. And they tried to kill him. They chased after him. There is a story of him being pushed into a river, into a stream, and and he was covered with water, and everyone was so afraid that he would die of pneumonia. And It was not an easy calling. What is it like for us? How do we know our calling is true? I know that as a minister, do you think that it's all smooth going? There have been many times that I have questioned my calling into ministry, saying, if it's this hard, if I can make a whole group of people angry with me, am I really called? Did I misinterpret this? Yeah, he's agreeing. Thank you, Parker. And yet, we are called not to make life comfortable not to make ourselves comfortable and to feel at ease. We are called by God. All of the people who've been called have never been called to do something to glorify themselves, right? We are always called into service for God. Where the last are first, the least are the greatest, and the greatest among us is a servant. Our call is never easy. It's never simple to grasp. And it is never for our glory. And if you think it is, you will be sorely disappointed. Right, lay leaders? <laughs> And so, there is this beautiful poem that was written by Mother Teresa, and it is advice for all of us. She wrote, people are often unreasonable, irrational, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years creating, others could destroy overnight. Create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. In the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. When you are called into whatever form of ministry, and everyone, we believe, has a calling. It's not going to be easy, but do it anyway. Amen. Oh, in peace, not because life is so easy, but go in peace because you have God with you and within you go in peace not to breeze through life but to have depth and meaning through Christ who is within you go in peace to be inspired to work for the kingdom and to do good for the poor and the hungry 
because the Holy Spirit is swirling in our midst. Amen.